Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a Dirac Live calibrator. Welcome to the first of a few videos where I talk to you and tell you and show you all about my new Dolby Atmos home cinema review system that I've been working hard on for a number of weeks. Now you should already be aware that I've chosen to use KEF LS50 speakers for surround duties and for Atmos duties of this home cinema system and that I've been busy installing these but that is not all I've done I've been busy and doing other things as well I've done some things that I wasn't expecting to do and I think some of it could be really really interesting for a lot of you so again over the next few videos I'm going to be bringing you details of all of this and for some of the areas I might go into more detail and make specific videos for them now what I will say is if you're interested in finding out or having me explain or show you things in more detail make sure you leave a note in the comment section down below of what you would like to see following all that I hope to make some really good quality demonstration videos for you. Now you guys probably know I'm the king of doing sound demonstrations, but when it comes to recording and filming movie content, it's really very difficult to get movie content through the YouTube copyright police. Now I've got a few ideas up my sleeve that I'm going to try and I will do my best to give you some indication of what the system sounds like, but please bear with me, I'll do my best as I always do. I could jump right in at the end and start telling you about the KEF LS50s and what I've done with the speakers, how I've installed them, especially how I've installed them as ceiling speakers, but really the speakers, all they do is tell you everything that you've done before them. So I want to start by telling you about the system, the system components that I've chosen and the system foundation that I've put into place. One of my main goals, or one of the things I wanted to accomplish with this project was to physically separate the home cinema system from the hi-fi system. Up until recently, the hi-fi and AV system shared the same rack. So it was a case of, if I wanted to watch a movie, I had to start pulling hi-fi out, installing an AV receiver, connecting up all the cables, and I'm an audiophile, I'm lazy, I do not want to be doing that, as I'm sure you can understand. On top of that, there were so many cables everywhere, it was just pure clutter, I was really limited and out of space, I didn't know where I was going to start adding all the extra boxes that I would need to take the system to Atmos. Now one of the problems that I have in general is that my main listening room is not very big, and I think in an ideal world, in situations like that, it would be lovely to have all your AV kit in a separate room that's air conditioned in a lovely rack because there is something pretty special about that. But I also think there's something special about having the kit in the room with you, being you know, tangible and uh, something that you interact with a lot and that you can touch, that you can mess around with and you can tweak as well. And as you probably already know, you know I'm a huge tweaker. I'm just as much of a tweaker with AV as I am with Hi-Fi. So I was happy to have all the kit in the room with me and it just so happened that there was a space kind of on the end of where I have the three main viewing seats that was just about the right size for, a, for an AV or a hi-fi rack that was not designed that was just a pure stroke of luck I've made a video several months ago called AV Rack of the Gods and in that video I introduced the AV rack that I was going to be using for this project and the rack is a Quadraspire Q4 Evo now what's great about this rack, well there's a few things. It's build quality is absolutely fantastic. Visually it's really nice. It's a custom rack so I was able to design it to have the exact number of shelves that I wanted at the exact height that I wanted. And I was able to choose what color it was. And I've got to admit I really like the mixture of bamboo and black. Once the rack is down, kind of pushed spikes into the carpet and kit loaded on top of it, it's absolutely rock solid and so far it's been absolutely ideal for the job. Electronics, what AV components was I going to use? This is actually a really easy one for me. I already owned an Arcam AVR850 AV receiver and as far as AV receivers go in the sort of semi-sensible price bracket I still don't think there's anything that touches it. It's got good quality DACs in it, pretty good build quality, Class G amplification which actually works really well. It's got a good amount of power for an AV receiver and most importantly for me, it's got Dirac Live built in. So the Arcam AVR850 is staying. I also already owned an Oppo 
203 UHD Blu-ray player, which about six months ago, I uh, did some upgrades to it. I upgraded the power supply to a linear power supply and a couple of other bits to it. And I've been more than happy with that as a UHD player. So that is also staying. Going back to the Arkham AVR 850, it does the full processing for a Dolby Atmos system for a 7.2.4 channel system but it only has seven built-in channels of amplification now i actually see this as a positive as opposed to a negative because the more amplifier channels you squeeze into a single box with everything else i honestly believe the quality of those channels is going to suffer so either way it meant i was going to need an additional four channel power amplifier to power the kef ls50s for the ceiling or height duties now i could have gone on a bit of a mission and started testing out all different manner of power amplifiers but to be honest the choice was quite an easy one i decided to buy an arcam p429 power amplifier now the p429 is a dedicated four channel power amplifier it's also arcam's class g amplification it has 90 watts of power at eight ohms across all four channels and it obviously matches the avr 850 from a visual point of view and it just seemed like the obvious choice and i want to thank nintronics the excellent hi-fi and av dealership because that was where i bought it from and they gave me fantastic service so between the arcam avr 850 and its class g amplification and the p429 and its class g amplification i was pretty confident that these amplifiers were going to be powerful enough and high quality enough to get really good results from the 8 kef ls50 but that's not really the end of the puzzle and to explain how i intended to wire everything up or power all the speakers i intended to use the arcam avr 850 to power the center speaker which is a kef reference 2c and to power the four kef ls 50s for surround duty so left and right surrounds and left and right rear surrounds then obviously the arcam p429 was there to power the four dolby atmos ceiling speakers but that still leaves the front left and right speakers to be powered the lnr which are kef reference free speakers now for this duty i'm intending to use a hi-fi integrated amplifier or maybe a hi-fi stereo power amplifier maybe monoblocks it would purely depend on what products are in for review at the time and what i'm currently using now the interesting part about that is that is the only link between the av system and the hi-fi system and it's a link that i think is really important so if i'm going to be using a stereo integrated amplifier ideally it needs to have a home theater bypass mode interestingly i've been using i've still got the nagra classic integrated amplifier now that doesn't have a home theater bypass so how i use that is i use a spare set of rca inputs it's just input four i literally just turn the volume up to maximum because that is really no different to using the home theater bypass obviously it's using the integrated amplifiers pre-amplifier section but with our amplifier as quality as the nagra it's such a clean signal anyway that really is not an issue so how do i wire that up i have to wire out of the arcam avr 850s pre-outs i have to wire a single-ended phono rca cable from the left and from the right pre-outs from the AVR 850 via a long cable up to the front of the room and to the hi-fi system to wire into the integrated amplifier or power amplifiers that I'll be using. As you can see, there is already a lot going on here with this system, but really this is just the start of it. Before I move on, I want to mention a little something that I added, which I think has already made a really significant improvement. With the KEF reference free speakers, maybe 12 months ago, I made a video and I tested and reviewed the ISO Acoustics Gaia 2 speaker isolators. And off the back of that set of videos that I made, I think ISO Acoustics were sold, you know, hundreds of pairs of Gaia because the difference that they make was so marked well i could not have the kef reference freeze sitting on top of iso acoustics guys and not have the center speaker sitting on them as well now the kef reference 2c center speaker is quite a bit smaller and lighter than the reference free speakers so i needed to buy one set of iso acoustics gaia one speaker isolators which are perfect for that smaller speaker i think that cost about 200 pounds and they make just as much difference as you would expect them to so that's been a really nice addition 
to the system. And the reason I did that and getting back to talking about the amplifiers and how things are wired up, it's because I wanted to make this system as uncompromising or no compromise as I possibly could within the realms of reality. So when it came the time to think about all the different wires and analog connections I was going to need, it took me about two seconds to think of the company that I was going to speak to about this. Firstly, I made a plan of what I was going to need. So I started out by buying some cheap cables off of Amazon, just so that I could do some testing throughout the process and so that I could gauge exactly the length that I would need. And to be honest, everything was sounding pretty good off the Amazon cables, I must admit, but I never had any intention of keeping them long term. So once I knew what I needed and I'd measured everything, I had a chat with Tellurium Q. And then after a long conversation, they provided me with some outstanding cables absolutely outstanding firstly they made two custom dedicated subwoofer cables for me now if you look on their website you'll see there are no subwoofer cables advertised now they do make them for customers it's just one of those things you need to speak to a dealer and ask for and they will make them for you as a custom cable now the cable they've made for me is about the ultra black sort of level it's actually a prototype design i can't tell you anything about it because i don't know anything about it but they tell me it's around their ultra black standard or level of cable which they think is about the highest level you could possibly need for that lfe link or the lfe channel connection or rca analog connection and i've been really really happy with those subwoofer cables they are phenomenal i then spoke to them about that long run of a center speaker cable because I wanted ideally a center speaker cable that would tonally match or be very, very close to the performance of the speaker cables that I was using for the left and the right channels, which are Tellurium Q Silver Diamond. Now a long run of Tellurium Q Silver Diamond, a seven meter run, is gonna be really, really expensive for me. So in a discussion, they came up trumps, maybe I shouldn't use that word, and they got me another prototype center speaker cable which is up there somewhere around the silver diamond standard but more importantly it's like it's a tonal match it's a very very similar tonal sound to the Tellurium Q silver diamond and again I couldn't be happier with the center speaker cable and if that wasn't enough they then were able to get me a long run stereo phono cable which again is a prototype design up there near or around their ultra black standard of cables and these cables are now hard installed in my system they're installed in trunking that trunking's covered over with black material that goes all over the wall so you can't see the cables so they're they're a fixed install and i would not have put those in unless i was over a hundred percent happy with them quite often when it comes to home cinema systems and because there's long runs of cables needed i've seen lots of people you know buy a much much cheaper cable to try and keep the cost down thinking that it's not important but I think it's just as important in an AV system, possibly even more important actually in an AV system to a hi-fi system, and I'll show you why later in this video. Moving on, I needed to connect the Arcam AVR850 to the Arcam P429 for the Atmos duty. So that means I needed two pairs or four individual phono cable. I just happened to have two pairs of Tellurium Q phono cables here that I wasn't using. So that means I've got pretty outstanding cables for this duty. At the moment, I'm using Tellurium Q Black Diamond. Stereo Phono interconnects, linking the front, left and right height channels, and I'm using Tellurium Q Ultra Black for the rear left and right. And some of you are probably thinking, why is he using Black Diamond RCA cables? That's just nuts. I'll probably make you right, except maybe these are just absolutely outstanding for this duty and i'm going to come back to this in the future so hold that thought so all the signal cables chosen bought and installed i then needed to start thinking about speaker cables for the four pairs or eight kef ls50s for surround duties and for atmos ceiling speaker duties now because this speaker cable needs to be run up walls run around ceilings and run everywhere i decided that it's probably better to look 
at more of a kind of custom installation speaker or a bulk speaker cable type of solution. So I racked my brains to think about which speaker cable company makes the best custom install or bulk cables. And again, it took me about two seconds to reach out to our friends over at AudioQuest because I was particularly interested in their flip fill speaker cables. But speaking to the guys at AudioQuest, they actually recommended that I use their brand new Rocket 11 speaker cable. Now the Rocket 11 is really quite an interesting cable because it uses quite a lot of AudioQuest's proprietary technologies and, and attentions to detail from a cable manufacturing point of view, but it does so at quite an affordable price point and it can be bought in a bulk fashion. So I decided to make life easier for myself and I bought a 100 meter bulk spool of Rocket 11. Doing this made a lot of sense because I didn't have to be exact in my measurements. I could install the cables kind of as and when and how best suited the application. Now I had to run some up the walls, in which case I put it inside trunking and across the ceilings, I was cable clipping them up into the ceiling. That's quite a big cable and I had to specially order in some 14 millimeter cable clips, which worked absolutely perfectly. These are available on Amazon and I'll put a link below the description in case this is something you'd like to go and do yourself. Now what's great about the Rocket 11 speaker cable is it's quite soft and it's quite flexible. So it makes the job of running the cable really quite easy. And it's got just a little bit of elasticity, if I can say the word in it. So when you're trying to straighten the cable out to put your cable clips in, it seems to want to kind of line itself up for you naturally. And again, that just makes the job a hell of a lot easier. When it came time for me to think about the terminations for the Rocket 11 speaker cable, I decided I wanted to get the best or the highest quality terminations that I could that didn't break the bank. And it was a pretty obvious and easy choice to choose the AudioQuest Grip 300 products in the silver plated finish. Now the reason I did that is because these are made from beryllium copper. They're not made from tin or they're not made from brass or they're not made from phosphor bronze. They're made from actual copper. I haven't worked with these particular connectors before, but I've made off loads of speaker cables in my life. And the AudioQuest Shogit 300s, lovely finish, really easy to work with, really easy to use. And I couldn't be happier with the end result with them from a Sonics point of view. The Rocket 11 was some of the easiest speaker cable that I've ever worked with. And that's probably because I had two really fantastic tools that I just want to give you a bit of a heads up four now they're just here now this is a pair of wire strippers you put your cable in there pop them and off pops a sheath and it leaves you the perfect conductors underneath that are not damaged so that costs about 20 pounds from amazon and that'll be the best thing you've bought if you take on a project like this it's just one of those things that are just handy to keep now the second product is actually quite a bit more expensive unless you steal it from your partner. Now, this is a pair of, I think they're Tronix wire clippers. Now, these are generally used in jewelry making. And the reason they're used for jewelry making is because they're really sharp and they've got a lovely kind of small cutting area. Now, a lot of jewelry making is kind of messing around with wire. Not really much different to making off speaker cable. So you can buy these on Amazon. I think they're about 65 pounds. And the cheapest way to get these is to get your partner into jewelry making and then she one day accidentally loses her set, they end up in your tool bag and she has to buy herself another set. So that is what I did. However, I'd suggest you probably buy your own pair unless you never ever want to hear the end of it. So with all eight of my Kef LS50s all wired up to a really high, no compromise level to a point, I was really, really happy with this. So it was time to look at the next level of foundation and that is with power. I already owned an Isotec Titan. The Titan is a dedicated two channel high current mains conditioning unit, which is perfect to power two amplifiers, two Arcam amplifiers, great. I also owned what's called the multi-way or the multi-link, can't remember, and that is an extension from the Titan so that you can power six other units. I only needed one plug to power the Oppo from, but it also gave me five spares for other things. Now I wanted to keep things as the same as possible. So I'm powering the two Arkham amplifiers and the Oppo 203 from XLO Signature 3 power cables. Now these are very, very high quality power cables, costing in the range of about £1,300 each. And then I've upgraded them to have Furitech plugs and IEC connectors at each end. 
to boost performance even more, I'm using two Furatech NCF booster products on both of the amplifiers. Now there's two reasons for this. One is to improve the performance, and two, the NCF boosters hold and support heavy IECs really tightly and securely. The NCF booster makes sure that that IEC stays rock solid in the amplifier and there's no chance of me accidentally knocking it, clipping it, or pulling it out by mistake. I've installed two brand new HDMI cables as well and these are fiber optic based HDMI cables from a company called Feesland. They're available on Amazon, very modestly priced for what they do and I'll be making an in-depth video about those coming soon. And that leaves me just one more cable and that turns out to be this one here, because this is the cable that's going to power the Isotec Titan from the wall. So essentially, this is going to be powering all the products in the AV system. I know that it doesn't because electricity doesn't work that way, but essentially this is the umbilical cord that takes the power from the wall that all the other products are going to be fed from. So to me, this cable is a really, really important cable. And for this cable, I wanted something that was really high quality, that was dark, so that you couldn't actually see it. I needed it to be flexible because of the way I needed to run the cable. I needed it to be DIY because I needed to install a Nutric PowerCon on one end because that is what the Isotec Titan takes. And I decided to go with this cable from Furatech. Now this cable is the Furatech FPSO32N Alpha Nano OFC power cable, a serious mouthful, and Infuratech always come up with some interesting names. So what does this cable sound like? Well, I actually can't tell you because I've not even plugged it in yet to try it out. This is literally the final piece in the jigsaw puzzle. But what I can say is I'm really, really excited to plug this in, sit down and enjoy and watch some films or some movies and enjoy all the hard work and all the money that's gone into creating this system and turning it into what it is. So hopefully this video has given you some insight into my new Dolby Atmos home cinema system. It's been a long time coming. It's been kind of two years in the making and I'm so close to being, I can't say the end because it's never the end. There's always you know, a ways to go, but at least to a point where I can sit and be really, really happy with the results. And I've got to be honest, I've already watched loads of films and done loads of testing and the results are pretty spectacular, but I don't wanna to give too much away. All that will be coming in future videos. Before I sign off, I just wanna to speak to you again about why I said having really high quality cables in an AV system is more important than a hi-fi system. If you look at the rear of the rack of my system, there is wires absolutely everywhere. Even if I tidied all those cables up, the sheer volume, the sheer number of speaker cables, signal cables, analog signal cables and power cables, all in close proximity to each other or touching each other, are all bound to have some sort of effect on each other. Higher quality the cable, the better the screening, the better the construction, the better the end result is going to be. And in the next video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the Kef LS50s, how I've installed them, how I've installed them on the ceiling. And again, don't forget, if there's anything that I've gone through in this video that you'd like covered in more detail or more specifically, make sure you leave a comment so I know that is what you would like to see and I'll do my best to create that for you. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button with the notification bell to make sure you get the next one when it drops, pinching that from Youth Man. Make sure to go and visit the website. There's always development work and hot news being added to that. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I know this is a long one. Thanks for staying with me to the end. Take care.